to the DBMCA channel. I am myself, Dr. Rajesh Gupta. I am the general medicine educator and the cardiologist. So as a part of the daily clinical ECG discussion, today I am discussing the clinical ECG number 10. So before going ahead with the session, let me just tell you or let me just inform you that I am discussing the entire ECG all the way from basics to the advanced level on 29th of January on eGurukul app. And it will be a live session and the session will be from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And after the session, I'll be providing you the PDF of the topics like what we have discussed. And in this session, I'll be discussing all the clinical emergencies, the basics. And after attending this session, you will become completely thorough and perfect in reading the ECGs and diagnosing the ECGs. Attending this session is very important because it will be helpful to you to save the life of the patients by diagnosing the clinical emergencies. And this session will be useful for third and fourth MBBS students, interns and post interns, those students appearing for the postgraduate entrance exams, senior and junior registrars, and as well as the practicing physicians. Having said this, let me just go ahead with the clinical scenario of the day. So this is a very important uh, clinical scenario which I have come across and I will tell you like what I have done to this particular patient after diagnosing the disorder in this individual. So I had one 72 year old male. He has a past history of coronary artery disease, hypertension and as well as diabetes. And what was the problem to him was he was having two months gradual worsening of fatigue and as well as the generalized body weakness and she came I mean sorry he came to me almost one week earlier and uh, he was on metoprolol right that is for coronary artery disease and as well as the hypertension and uh, he was on 50 milligrams of metoprolol so what I have reduced what I have done is I have reduced that to 25 milligrams once daily why? Because he was complaining of fatigue and as well as the poor medication intolerance. After taking this metoprolol, he was feeling that some weakness and all. So I have reduced the dose from 50 to 25 milligrams. And almost like one week prior to presentation, he discontinued metoprolol. Right? He completely discontinued metoprolol. He was not even taking 25 milligrams. Even with discontinuation of metoprolol, there is no resolution of his symptoms. And when he came to me, he was noted to have the heart rate of only 37 per minute. And he was having feeble pulse. Cardiovascular examination showed bradycardia. 37 beats per minute was the heart rate. And there were, it was like on examination, it was regular rate, but ECG was showing an irregular rhythm. There was no rub, there was no murmur, there was no gallop. So this is the clinical presentation of the individual, right? patient with past history of coronary artery disease, diabetes and hypertension who is on metoprolol 50 milligrams reduced it to 25 milligrams because of fatigue and weakness and almost like one week back he completely stopped metoprolol even then he was having that particular weakness and on arrival the ECG was like this right when he came to the emergency department ECG was like this. Now what next what will you do if a patient comes to you in the same clinical scenario with the following ECG. So first of all, you should be able to diagnose what exactly abnormality you have in the ECG. First important thing is that the individual is having an irregular rhythm. What is that? See, you can have a P wave, you are having a P wave, that is PQRST complex, and again you have a P wave and there is no QRS complex. And again, same story, you have a P wave, you have a P wave and there is no QRST complex. So you have an irregular rhythm, right? The ventricular complexes are not being present. And if you take the PR interval, the PR interval is being constant. The PR interval is not changed. The PR interval, it is constant. So constant PR interval, right? And you have intermittent drop in the QRS complex. What is the diagnosis of this particular ECG? The diagnosis of this ECG is Mobitz type 2 second degree AV block. It's a second degree AV block of Mobitz type 2. Second degree AV block you have type 1 and type 2. This is your type 2. Why? Because there is constant PR interval. Whereas in Mobitz type 1 there will be progressive prolongation of the PR interval. Okay. Now having said this I have diagnosed it to be a 2 is to 1 AV block 
and I have done the laboratory test in order to look for if there is any abnormality causing this second degree AV block. So everything was normal, complete blood count was normal, electrolytes was normal, blood urea nitrogen, creatinine, glucose, troponin, everything was normal. Then what next I have done is, I have admitted the patient to the telemetry unit for monitoring. What is telemetry unit? It is the place where you will have an extended observation of the heart rate. So when I have admitted the uh, patient to the telemetry unit and monitored the heart rate, the heart rate, it was around 30 beats per minute with normal blood pressure without symptoms. So the heart rate was 30 per minute, right? In the telemetry unit. Now, this is the patient. Now, what will you do now? So you have come to a conclusion to 2 is to 1 AV block. And in the home, while he was doing activities, he was having the fatigue and as well as lightheadedness. And in the telemetry unit, he was a completely in rest rate position, but the heart rate was only 30 per minute. Now, what should I do? Do you think that if I give just an atropine, this uh, uh, second degree AV block will be resolved? No. Let me tell you, Mobitz type 2 AV block, it is the one which has worst prognosis. So what I have done is, I have done a permanent pacemaker placement. And once I've done the permanent pacemaker placement, there was a resolution of the block. And he was discharged feeling much improved on hospital day four of admission. So what I want to tell you from this particular clinical case scenario, let me tell you now. Okay, before that, what is the mechanism for the Mobitz type 2 AV block? Where exactly is the site of block? See, Mobitz type 2 is usually due to failure of conduction at the level of his Purkinje fibers. Right? Due to failure of conduction at the his Purkinje. This is your AV node. Exactly below the AV node, the problem will be there for the development of Mobitz type 2 AV block. And what are the etiologies? What would be the cause for the development of Mobitz type 2 AV block in this patient? See, if you go back to the history, he was having the history of coronary artery disease. And that particular coronary artery disease, what he had is anterior wall MI. That was, that might be the one which is predisposing the individual to develop this Mobitz type 2 second degree AV block. What are the other etiologies which will cause Mobitz type 2 second degree AV block? That is idiopathic fibrosis of the conducting system. That is called Leps disease and Lennegris disease. And the other important etiology is cardiac surgery. Any particular cardiac surgery, especially when you are doing close to the septum, those particular cardiac surgeries can cause injury to the adjacent Purkinje fibers. That might be the one which will predispose the individual to second degree AV block, that is Mobitz type 2. So these are the causes for Mobitz type 2. Now, what are the important points that you have to learn from this session? Let me tell you, first degree AV block, it can be a normal finding, even that can be seen in a healthy young adult or even athlete also. Whereas, you take second degree AV block, we have two types, Mobitz type 1 and type 2. Mobitz type 1, they don't require the pacemaker, but Mobitz type 2, it carries a worst prognosis and those patients require the permanent pacemaker if at all, if they are symptomatic. Our patient is having fatigue, our patient is having weakness, our patient is also having the feeling of lightheadedness. So, symptomatic Mobitz type 2 AV block. So, you have to put a permanent pacemaker. And finally, complete heart block or third degree AV block. Even these particular patients, they require permanent pacemaker. So, this is what I wanted to teach you from this particular clinical scenario. Pacemaker, how to read an ECG with pacemaker? I will discuss that in detail on 29th of January when I am doing a detailed ECG discussion and that is going to be a very, very important topic. So, this is the clinical scenario of the day. Thank you very much. See you again tomorrow with an another important clinical ECG. So, before that, let me just remind on 29th of January, I will be discussing the ECG all the way from basics to the advanced level. And those students who want to get subscribed, you can click on the link which is given in the description. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow again.